God, we praise God, and we thank you for his many, many blessings. And as we continue to worship the Lord, we're going to ask if you will stand with the choir as they come forth and give us our opening hymn. Amen. Amen. How many believe this morning that the Lord just keeps on blessing me? And he keeps on blessing us. Amen. Amen. He just keeps right on doing what he promised us that he would do. And that is never leave us, nor will he forsake us. Amen. He keeps on blessing me. Amen. All right. He keeps on blessing me over and over again. He keeps on blessing me over and over again. Well, well. He keeps on blessing me over and over again. Y'all sing now. He keeps on blessing me.
over and over again. Amen. His blessings, ah, they never run out. Gracious and eternal God, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father God, for your fresh anointing. We thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings, God. You've kept us all night long. You allowed us to wake up this morning, rise up to a brand new day. Father God, we just ask that your Holy Spirit have its way in this place today. And Lord God, we will forever, God, give you all the glory all the honor, all the praise, and we thank you, Lord, thank you. for your many blessings. Yes, this is the precious you. and adorable name of Christ Jesus, we do pray, and we say amen, amen, amen. and amen. I've got an angel watching over me. I've got an angel watching over me. And my angel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot see, but I've got an angel, yes, sir, watching over me. God gave me an angel to watch over me. God gave me an angel. To watch over me and my angel is there to protect me. I got an angel watching over me. I got an angel watching.
together. O Lord, our 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 Lord, We know that it's, we know what you go through. We don't know what you go through. You know. 
know what you go through. God knows what you go through. But you continue to just keep keep it on, as they say. So we just thank you for everything that you've done for us here at Law Hill. We appreciate your ministry and music, your word, your banging on the drums. So we, we just thank you. Continue for God knows that you are a man of God. So we just thank you for what you do for us here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dookie Duke, we just thank you for what you do here. We appreciate you, Duke. We appreciate you when you bring word. We appreciate when you worship lead. We appreciate you when you turn that coat off. We just appreciate what you do and what God has put on your heart to do. You just keep doing you, Duke. So we appreciate you, Minister John, as they say. Thank you so much for being my brother. Amen? Amen. Amen. We love you here. <laughs> Reverend Keisha. Used to be the little quiet mouse, as Duke used to say. That's where he was too. We thank you for come for God for bringing you out of your shell, Keisha. We just appreciate you so much. Um, I just don't know what to say. I remember when you was a little quiet, shy, Keisha. You never think that God would be that voice that He gave you. We know it only could be God. So we thank you, Keisha, for bringing us the word. I say Keisha because you're Keisha to us, and it don't matter about the title. But we just appreciate when you open that mouth for God put on your hard to break to us, and we thank you for the most mighty words that we give you. Thank you so much, Keisha. We appreciate you here in our Hill. Thank you so much. Robert Cotton, we thank you so much for the many, many years that you have given us here. I told you on last Sunday that you give us that nugget, you bring out those scriptures that we don't even see existing. So we do know that you're a man of God. We just thank you for putting up with us, putting up with them anyway, for so many years. <laughs> we appreciate you. We, we really do, and we just want you to know that. Hopefully you do know that we do appreciate you and all that you do for us. Thank you for being our pastor. We appreciate you. And we just want you guys all to know that it's not just this month that we appreciate you. We appreciate you all year round. Continue just hanging there with us. And eventually we'll get together. I have, but they will eventually. Thank you all so much. God bless you. Oh, anybody else that has stuff to give? I'm sorry. Anybody else that has gifts that they want to give? This is your time as well. I just echo what Joyce has already said. Thank you um, so much for your, your teaching, the love that you always pour out. Um, you've been a blessing to me and my family. So this is from me and we love you very much. Reverend Lakeisha, God bless you. Thank you. Reverend Minister Johnson, God bless you. So name and crew as well. Thank you.
do for us. And the little nuggets that you throw in my basket is, is a blessing. You help me grow to be the person that I am. And without you, I don't know where I would be without that part of you that you put into me.
push your buttons. Yeah. 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 And you know, sometimes I forget mm -hmm. I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. But when I do, you don't push my buttons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I try to be kind to everybody when I can. But it's hard. Yeah. I'm telling you. Y'all don't realize what I go through. You don't realize phone calls I get and the mess that they bring. But I try to overlook it. Anyway, I'll just come forward, please. <laughs>
God, we thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Just for another opportunity to be in the house of worship. Lord God, as I stand behind this your sacred desk, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you would hide me behind thy cross. Lord God, that your people would see none of me, Lord God, but all of you, Father God. Lord God, I ask, Lord God, that you would dip me down, Lord God, in your power, your anointing, your wisdom, and your understanding, Father God. Lord God, and bring me up, Lord God, that I might pour out the word which you have put down on the inside of me, Lord God, that even a child might be able to understand, Father God. Lord God, I come on assignment for you on today, Lord God. Lord God, I come that you might be glorified and edified and the enemy might be horrified, Lord God. So, Lord God, I commend it all unto you, Father God. Lord God, have your way, Lord God. I am surrendered unto you, Lord God. Lord God, my yes is unto you on today, Father God. So, Lord God, have your way, Lord God. Anything that the enemy has set in motion, Lord God. From the worship, from the praise, from the word going forth, Lord God, we ask that you turn it around, Lord God, that it be for your good, Father God. These and all other blessings I ask in thy most precious name, and we say amen, amen, and amen. I say good afternoon. There is a word from the Lord on today, and that word will be coming from Psalms 34. Psalms 34. And we will begin at verse number one. Mm -hmm. Psalms 34, beginning at verse number one. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Uh -huh. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. You may be seated. If I had to use for a topic on this morning, it would be, what's in your cup? You can't pour from an empty cup. How many of us know that there is nothing like some ice cold water to cool us off on a hot summer's day? Or a warm cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee or cocoa to bring us warmth on a cold day? How many of you know that this is just what the Word of God does for us when we're going through something? That it's just what our praise and our worship does for us when we are seeking refuge and strength amid our trials and our tribulations. There is something about being in the presence of God. There is something about knowing that even when I am going through, even when you are going through, even in the midst of our situation, that we can trust that there is a promise that will come out on the other side. Oh, I just come to encourage someone on today that now is not the time to abandon your worship. Now is not the time to let your cup go empty, but it's refilling season. So again, I say to you on today, what's in your cup? See, this text was written by David. And we know David is a man who is after God's own heart. He was one by no means a perfect man, but one who loved the Lord. 
in spite of his challenges and his disobedience, he was still appointed, anointed, and on assignment. See, this psalm is one of praise, one of trust, and one of thanksgiving. See, during the time when David wrote this psalm, he was fleeing from King Saul. And he ended up in Gath, which is Goliath's hometown, but was now facing King Abimelech. See, in 1 Samuel 21, when this was happening, it tells of how David had to pretend to be insane in order to then escape Gath and King Abimelech. So when he was alone in the cave, he began to write this Psalm 34. See, what I found in my studying of this is that David had ended back up where he had defeated Goliath, but then he was now facing another issue. That's just like how we're going to be on this Christian journey. As soon as we get through one trial or one tribulation and we think we've made it, here comes something else and God shows us we haven't already arrived and there's still some work to be done. But see, what David taught us is even in this, Despite what he was having to do to deceive his enemies by taking matters into his own hands, despite him trying to work out his own situation by playing crazy, because see, God didn't tell him to play crazy. Right. David decided that he was going to figure out how to get himself out of the situation. God still provided a way of escape and made provision for him in the midst of his circumstance. Because this is why David began to, um, to pin Psalm 34 in the cave, because he remembered that even in his disobedience and even in him not following God, God still made provision for him. God still made a way of escape. See, David still had some worship and some praise down on the inside of him, regardless of what he was going through. No matter how dark the situation got, David still had a little word down on the inside of him. David still knew how to praise God, regardless of what was going on. When God began to deal with me regarding this text, he shifted my focus to verse number 8. And verse number 8 in the King James, the New King James Version says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. But when you read it in the NIV, it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. In order to take refuge in something, you've got to be able to trust in it. In order to trust in something and to take refuge in it, you've got to have a relationship with it. So I come to let you know, in order to find refuge in the Lord, you've got to have a relationship with him. In order to have a relationship with him, you've got to trust him. You've got to know him for yourself. So as I further begin to study the text, God began to show me the importance of examining what we are ingesting mm -hmm. and also what we are pouring out when we are going through our tests and our trials, as well as how we are navigating our Christian journey. Uh -huh. So I begin to look at the taste and see that the Lord is good. The ingestion. The only way we know that something is good is if we try it. We've got to begin to study the word of God. We've got to begin to trust and believe what God says. We've got to begin to align our plans with his plans and surrender our lives to him. Too many times we make plans and then we invite God into our plans and wonder why our plans are not working out. But we need to align our lives with the plan that God has for us. See, David said he sought the Lord. He went after the Lord. Uh -huh. We must be in constant communication with God. Uh -huh. Always praying. Always seeking his direction and his will for our lives, for the ministry, for our family. We are never all prayed up. Uh -huh. The word of God tells us that we are to pray without ceasing. Yeah. To pray without yeah. ceasing means that we need to be constantly yeah. in prayer. That doesn't mean just praying when we get up in the morning and praying when we lay down and praying when a car swerves in our direction. We've got to be in constant prayer. There are going to be some times when you've got to get up from your desk. You might not even be able to get up from your desk, and you've got to be able to call on the name of Jesus. You've got to be able to communicate with God for yourself. You cannot be able to depend on grandma's prayers, daddy's prayers, and mama's prayers. You've got to be able to go to God for yourself. When we're going through we should be ingesting the word of God. Uh -huh. We should be meditating on his word. Uh -huh. 
desire. The things that he desires for us. Because sometimes while we're on this Christian journey, we tend to put things down on the inside of us and attach things to us that God did not desire for us. So then God has to begin to prune us. He has to begin to isolate us and empty us so he can then begin to put down on us, put down on the inside of us that which he has for us. That's called the ingestion. We don't have time to be sitting on Facebook, Instagram, watching Fox News, and on the telephone gossiping and sipping on somebody else's tea. We're waiting on deliverance and healing and breakthrough, yet we're suffering from dehydration. We are thirsty from lack of the living word. Too many times we are in other people's business and minding other people's lives instead of ingesting the word of God. We are waiting on God to show up and we haven't opened our mouths, opened our Bibles, or ears to hear from the Lord all week. We're waiting on pastor to get up. We're waiting on the choir. We're waiting on the praise team to give us a word. And God is waiting on us to begin to seek him. If we would just use our holy imagination for a minute. I see the Bible, the word of God, like the cup. In order to quench our thirst, we have got to draw from it. You might be saying, Reverend Keish, how is that possible? Well, we have to have the word of God down on the inside of us in order to be able to draw from it. Because not all the time are you going to have the Bible in your hand or at your at your reach. You've got to have some word down on the inside of you. So as long as I can get out, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That lets me know that I lack nothing in the Lord. As long as I can say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the word down on the inside of me. It's a daily nourishment. God showed me that when we on this Christian journey, sometimes we're going to go through some things that cause us to sweat. And when we sweat, if you're an athlete, you know you can get a little dehydrated if you don't put something down on the inside of you. Sometimes on this Christian walk, you're going to shed some tears. You're going to have some heartache. So if you're not refilling with the word, if you're not communicating with God, if we're not seeking him, our cup is going to run dry. God is saying, what are we using to sustain us? Are we trying to pour from an empty cup? Then the next thing the text showed me was we can't abandon our worship when we're going through. Uh -huh. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times uh -huh. and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh -huh. That means I will continually praise him. No matter what is going on, I'm going to continue to worship him. Uh -huh. My worship is not conditional. Ooh. That means regardless of what I'm going through, I'm going to praise my way through. Uh -huh. I'm going to press my
worship. We have to have a zeal for worshiping Christ and for doing the work of the Father. To have a zeal means to have passion, to have persistence, and to have power. He gives all of that to us. Having that burning zeal requires constant tending to the fire and rekindling it. It means having a personal relationship with Christ. It means personal worship, corporate worship. It means prayer. It means Bible study. It means a coming together on one accord. That's how we fill our cup to continue to do the work that has been assigned to us. Too many times we're trying to do kingdom work with an empty cup. The last point that God showed me in this text was the promise to, to deliver us. See, when you wholeheartedly seek God, when you wholeheartedly trust God, when you wholeheartedly take him at his word, that's when he begins to move. When you praise him regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it feels like, he will come to see about you. The text said he will deliver. He will save. They said they sought the Lord. And no good, no, it, it said they seek the Lord and they shall not want any good thing. No good thing will he withhold from you when you seek him. He will come and see about you. Those promises are reserved for those of us who fear him. To fear him means to, re to reverence him, to respect him, to obey him. He's going to supply our needs. He will be our peace. He will be our head of protection when we diligently seek him, when we run after him, when we call upon him. God's promises, God promises to be with us. He promises to be before us. He promises to be with us in the middle of it. Uh -huh. And he promises to be with us after it. Yeah. He just wants us to endure well. Mm -hmm. He yeah. just wants us to run well. There is nothing that we will experience that Christ does not know about. Uh -huh. There is nothing that he has not, not given us dominion over. There's nothing that he has not given us the power to overcome. There's nothing that he has not given us authority over. See, Jesus went to the cross, a man who knew no sin, but yet gave up his life for our sin. He had to endure. Even in his moments of enduring, he had to talk to his father. So what makes us think that we don't need to talk to our father when we are go going through? Jesus said, Father, if it is your will, take this bitter cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's how we have to be about it. Father, if it's not my will, but if it's your will, God, I'm going to go anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Not only that, Jesus gave up his life for us. They didn't take it. He gave it up for us. Was buried in a borrowed tomb, but on the third day got up with all power in his hand. Still seated at the right hand of the Father. Still interceding for us. Still working it out for us. He handled his cup well so that we can handle our cup well. It behooves us to seek God. It behooves us to worship God. So he can come and see about us. We can't pour from an empty cup. We can't do kingdom work from an empty cup. We have to stay connected to Christ. We got to continue to magnify him. We got to continue to worship him. He promises to come and see about us. So I say, what's in your cup? When you're going through, are we complaining? Are we folding our arms? Are we throwing in the towel? Are we telling God, if it doesn't work out like this, I can't do it anymore? Are we sipping on negativity? Are we sipping on jealousy? Are we sipping on envy? Are we sipping on fear? Or are we worshiping? Are we praying? Are we fasting? Are we holding each other accountable? Mm. See, this message caused me to do a self-evaluation because I was running on empty. I was trying to do everything for any and everybody. Come on. And I was tired. Mm -hmm. My cup was running on empty. My cup was running on empty. And then the Lord had someone to speak to me. 
Are you worshiping with an empty cup? Are you ministering with an empty cup? 